One of the most important and most overlooked jobs on the farm is cleaning out the spray tank. And it's gotten to be more difficult than ever before because we have Roundup crops and non-Roundup crops. We have Liberty crops and non-Liberty crops. We have a lot of things out there that can really destroy other crops if you get even a small amount in there. And you know, it's not just totally killing it. It's about knocking two bushels off or five bushels off, something you probably would never even really notice. But if that happens, it can cost you a lot of money on your farm. You know, I think uh, this is one of the spots where the universities have done a pretty good job training farmers, but I don't think farmers are listening. Uh, I know in many cases I've gone to university trials where they're trying different herbicides out and they say, you know, just to simulate what would happen if we had a little bit of tank contamination, we threw like a 0.01% of this herbicide in the tank and it just did all kinds of damage to the crop and in many cases it took quite a few bushels off the yield in the fall. Well, 0.01 is pretty low. I think it was more like 1%. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't take very much of a, right. of a contaminant in there to do a big job. So. It not only means cleaning out that spray tank and making sure there's nothing in there at all, it also means cleaning out the booms, the tips, the filters. All yep. those things are spots where a little bit of pesticide could be held up. And here's the whole problem. Most of these things are made out of plastic. Well, the trouble with plastic is you can get material that's going to seep into those pores. So what I'm saying is, let's say you had been spraying Banvel on your corn or Status or Distinct or Clarity, any of those on your corn. You'd been doing that for a week. Well, now you're gonna switch over to soybeans. As you know, even the smallest amount out there could do some damage to your soybeans. Well, let's say you switch over and everything's going along fine. You spray for a few days, no damage whatsoever. Then you leave some Roundup and Select Max in the tank overnight and the next day you go out and spray you see leaf response and you say wow how did this happen i haven't sprayed any uh, dicamba stuff for a week or two but you know what when that roundup and select max sits in that tank it can suck some of the stuff out of the pores of that tank or out of the tips or out of the boom it's a big issue i know back in the conventional soybean days bassagran was widely used for cockleburr and sunflower control. Bassagran was one of the best tank cleaners out there. If you had <laughs> ever used a, a dicamba or a 2,4-D in that yep. sprayer, Bassagran would seem to suck that right out of the pores. Okay, so the question is, how are you going to avoid that problem on your farm? Number one, you could go with stainless steel stuff. So you could have a stainless steel tank instead of a poly tank on your sprayer the cost of the tank will probably be five to 10 times what that poly tank is, maybe more. So you can say, well, boy, I don't know if I want to spend that money. You know what, if you're switching back and forth between a lot of different products, it's probably worth it to spend that money. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to have a poly tank, I'll tell you what we do on our farm. We'll do the whole triple rinse thing. So we'll rinse it, we use tank cleaner, we rinse it again. So all that stuff's great, that's what most people do. We take one more step. We let that spray tank sit with water and tank cleaner overnight if we're gonna switch back and forth between really harmful stuff to a very sensitive crop. I'm serious, we let it sit with water and tank cleaner overnight. If we don't do that, we do not switch to that crop. Well, I think the biggest part of that whole, that whole discussion is you have to do this immediately. You get to the end of the field, you're sitting at the end of the field, you just got done, you should have an extra tank with a little bit of water. Maybe it's 100 gallons or a couple hundred gallons of water. Run that in the tank right then and do your first rinse out. With most of the tank cleaners on the market, you could do your rinse out, go right back out in that field and spray it out so you're using it, you're environmentally friendly, you don't have a bunch of wastewater to try and get rid of yep. at the end of the day. That's a good thing to do. The other thing to keep in mind is most of these products that you're putting on, you're putting it on with some sort of sticker to try and stick it onto the leaves and get it to be where it needs to be. So do clean it right away. The other thing that I'll caution you on is this. If you're spraying something that foams up in your tank, you may have a half full tank, but it's got a little bit of foam on the top. That foam gets on the underside of the top of the tank and it's difficult to clean out. So when you're doing your clean out, Make sure you've got some sort of nozzle that you can get in there that'll spray up and under the top side of that tank. So you can get everything cleaned off if you had some foam or, or some of the sticky stuff in there that's stuck on the top of the tank. A couple other ways you can avoid major problems. Number one, just buy another sprayer. Have two sprayers there, one for Roundup, uh, one for Liberty, or well, well, one for corn, one for beans, If you're gonna buy a new is. sprayer, you know what? Buy a new sprayer, but don't trade in the old one that you won't right. get much value for anyway keep it. Another thing you could do is get an injection system. So in your tank, it's only water. And then you inject straight chemical into the line. It's metered out very precisely. A lot of these injection systems now 
now are much better than the old ones, it's a pretty good way to go. There are quite a few farmers I know that have gone that way just because they are so worried about that contamination issue, just like we are on our farm. Well, spray tank contamination is a big issue. So tank clean out, boom clean out, filter clean out, tip clean out, all those things are very critical if you want to get those extra bushels on your farm that you may have been losing oh, in the past. One last thing too, make sure you're using a good spray tank cleaner. Don't use household ammonia that usually does not cut it. You've got to find a very good spray tank cleaner that is designed to take pesticides out of spray tanks. And also keep them in solution so you can flush them out. Well, tank contamination is a big issue but so is weed control and we'll show you how to kill this tough weed later in the show.